Continuing with prospecting, don't shotgun. You have got to concentrate. Let's talk now about in the prospecting of the farm area, the service area, the canvas area, the door-to-door -door area, whichever term you like to use. I recommend that in order to develop a service area, and that's what I call it, is that you use a little record plate book. This is a sample here of a record plate book. Now, I know there's some sales trainers that go around saying that you should have this three-ring notebook that you go up to the door and you take this elaborate survey about when the husband was born, how much money do you owe, and all different things. And this is why door-to-door -door canvassing is not working. I'll say this. Door-to-door -door canvassing is one of the most unproductive ways of getting listings that there is the way most people are doing it. On the other hand, it can be one of the most productive methods of obtaining listings if done properly and consistently. Consistency is the name of the game in prospecting door to door. How would you feel if I came up to your door with this thing up in front of me? It's just too much, I do believe. But you decide if you're doing it and using it and like it, successful with it, continue doing it. Anything you're doing that's working, continue doing it. But I recommend myself, I like this little record plate book like this. And on the inside, this is record plate number 830. 830, that's the number of the book. You can get them at any good stationery store. In here, what you can do is they have these little record plates here like this. The book will come with some of these or you can buy them in little packages of a hundred for about a dollar. On there it has the name, the address, the city, the state, the phone, and then lines to make information on it. You can make information about the clients in the back, on the back part of the little record plate. They even make a special little record plate for real estate. It's record plate number 507. It gives the address, the price, the lot, the rooms, the bedrooms, the square foot, age, baths, all about the heat and air, fireplace, kitchen tile, exterior, roof, landscape, fence, garage, fruit trees, encumbrances, remarks, taxes, occupied, house shown, owner, phone, address. These can be a good little card to use to follow up on for sale by owners. Or maybe a buyer. You could adapt it to record information about a buyer. And then on the back of it again, you've got plenty of room that you could write more information. Maybe properties that you've shown, what happened when you called back on the for sale by owner, or whatever the case might be in your situation. If I were approaching the front door of your home and I was standing there like this rather than with a three ring binder, how much more comfortable does that seem for both of us? Quite a bit. In the back of your book, I recommend that you have a little map of the area. Now, not just specifically the exact area that you're going to work. Have the surrounding area, pretty well as much of it as you can get on here because you may be in your service area knocking on doors and somebody will say, yes, as a matter of fact, I know of a house, I don't know the name of the street, but it's two doors in and you can just turn to the back of your book and you say, Mrs. Jones, we're right here. How would you drive to that property? And she says, now you go down this street, this one and this one. That's the street right there. It's four houses in, it's white with black trim or whatever it might be. I recommend if you're starting a service area that you do not start with any more than 300 homes. No more than 300. Then if you find that you can service those 300 homes properly and then wish to expand it, do it. You see, but the danger is most people starting out in the business, they'll spend four weeks putting together a little service planner of some type. They'll do all this research, all this information, and then the dust starts to crust over the top of it and they starve themselves out of the business and they never went to see anybody. Work up maybe 50 homes, go see the people, come back, work up another 50, go see the people, come back and keep adding to it. When you're doing your service area, I recommend that you start small but service them. And then I recommend that you come through the area back again at least every 30 to 45 days. A lot of people, they go out and they knock on doors with all good intentions. They walk down the street knocking on the doors and everything. At the end of the street or the end of the day, they've knocked on a hundred doors or whatever it might be. And every door they knocked on, the people say, no, we're not interested. All the houses on the street just sold. Well, we know that's a lie, don't we? Because every house didn't just sell. And they say that, you know, this is a stable neighborhood. Nobody sells in this area. We've all got friends in the business and you buy it. Then how's your ego at the end of the day? Gee, nobody out there is going to list their house with me. It's a tough market. The secret to knocking on doors is coming back again and again and again. You're going to find that it's going to take probably at least the third or fourth time through before you become productive in the area. 
And then I assure you, once you get a foothold in that area, you can completely dominate it entirely. Give handouts. I recommend that you give handouts when knocking on doors. As an example, area maps, calendars, a list of comparable sales. Now, if you do that, be sure that if you give a list of comparable sales that you do not put in the specific address because I've seen lawsuits created on this as being an invasion of privacy. If you pass these out in your neighborhood, then have a client call and say, I would like further information on a specific floor plan or specific price range of homes or something like that. Then you can come back with a comparative market analysis in your research aspect of it and you can do that. Dog cookies. I recommend you pass out dog cookies. Now, you can't say, Mrs. Jones, would you like a dog cookie, please? <laughs> One thing I found was the first time I was going through my farm area, and I love animals. When we had the 20-acre farm back home, or when I lived there, my folks still have it, but when I lived on a 20-acre dirt farm in West Virginia, at one time I had seven dogs, rabbits. I love animals. I'd be knocking on doors and this German shepherd would lunge out, and I'd just start petting my leg like that and say, how's the old buddy? Don't ever try to pet a dog when he's coming out at you when he doesn't know you. I found the best technique is just start petting my leg like that. Now, there's some techniques that I've used where I jump up, I turn, and I run. <laughs> <laughs> I've found sometimes that's the most effective technique in some occasions. Let me tell you about this one case. I was starting my farm area, and the first time I knocked on these doors, this chihuahua, you know what a chihuahua is, came out of the house and my gosh just barking and gnashing teeth and nipping at my heels and just creating all kinds of noise i thought it was a doberman pincher at first you know shrunken get this animal away from me but i started coming back through my area and then i started giving him a dog cookie when i came by and about my third or fourth time back through there when he saw the door open he would look for me and if it was me here this little guy would come out and want his dog cookie this lady was a member of a real good coffee clique. Like every Wednesday and Friday morning, her and all the ladies in the neighborhood would come in and have coffee, play bridge, or whatever it might be. A tremendous influence in the neighborhood. So I got the idea that I would start stuffing this dog with cookies, whether he wanted them or not. <laughs> have you ever seen a 30-pound chihuahua? <laughs> you can fatten them little buggers up, I assure you. Balloons, balloons. I recommend giving out balloons to kids and suckers. If you're going down one side of the street, and if I saw a couple of children on the other side of the street playing in the front lawn or something, I might walk over and say, kids, would you like to have a balloon and a sucker? Well, you ever have a kid say no? Now, here's what I would do, what the pro would do. Say, would you like a sucker and a balloon? Naturally, normally, they're gonna say yes. Now, before you take it, I want you to take my card and go in and ask your mommy if it's okay. Now, when you're coming back down the other side of the street, who's out there to thank you? The mother. You can kill people with kindness. Give, my gosh, give a lot. Garage for sale signs. Garage for sale signs are real good. Garage. Didn't you guys ever sell a garage? <laughs> garage sale signs. And we had a little thing like this. It was a telephone number list. It says frequently called numbers. We'd ask them to keep it by the telephone. And then what we'd do is when we came back to list the house in a couple months or we'd get a referral or something, by the telephone, we'd normally always find one of these all filled out with phone numbers on it. And at the bottom of it here, it says we buy equities. Thinking of buying or selling? had the phone number of the office, had the office name, and then each of our salespeople had a little rubber stamp with their name on it and their home phone number. And then if you're on floor duty, what you can do is take a little stack of these that you're gonna pass out in your area, just take your stamp and go and stamp out, you know, 50 of them or something like that. Then you've got your materials to pass out in your farm area, your service area. Another thing we had was a sheet like this, as an example, that was me a few years ago, I think. That's a picture of me. And then this was a little introductory letter. At the top of it, it says, Real Estate Service Center proudly presents Roger Butcher. And then it tells how great Roger Butcher is. I mean, it's not real long, but it was impressive. And then at the bottom, it says, To honor distinguished achievement. 
Let me give you an example of a good dialogue to use door to door, a good opening dialogue that I found to work tremendously. See, the danger is most people come by knocking on doors and wanting to tie up the people and they can see it with all the questions that they're trying to ask. And then the homeowner at the door sees this individual going through all these questions the people are busy. I've found what works the best is that when you can ask just one or two questions, they know that you're not going to be taking up much of their time. They become much more open to give you information your next time through. And this is what I like about this dialogue. It's very short, asking for help. As an example, we knock on the door and I recommend that you get back from the door. If they have the people, one thing you can do is if this was the door here and I was knocking on it, I might walk around the front of the garage. Now when they look through the peephole and nobody's there, what happens? They're curious. So then when you hear the door open, hello, but maybe you weren't home. Good morning, I'm Roger Butcher with Name Your Company. And we just sold another house down the street or over on Campana, name the street, whatever it is. And a lady down the street said that a home right through here was going to be for sale. Do you know which one it might be? See, now you started looking around. That takes the emphasis off of you. This creates some confidence through her. She knows then that you're not going to be lunging in the door at her or him or whatever it might be. Now, when you get two or three neighbors at the end of the block pointing to the Browns' house, would you say that's a pretty good indication that there's going to be a home for sale in the area? Boy, I'd be sleeping on the doorstep when they came home or go over there right now. Then if she says, well, no, as a matter of fact, I don't know which one it will be. Thank you very much. By the way, would you please keep my card in case you might hear? Now, normally they'll take your card and give her a dog cookie or <laughs> whatever. And then, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Start to turn, start to walk. She thinks now that you're leaving. Say, oh, by the way, when will you folks be selling? Now, a lot of people ask me, do you use the same dialogue every time you come through? The answer is yes. So let me ask you a question. How many of you remember what LSMFT means? Say it for me. And it's surprising that you remember that after only hearing it once or twice. Right? No, the American Tobacco Company spent millions of dollars in advertising to program your mind for that. Take a look maybe three or four times that you've come by. Let's say you've come through an area three or four times. You've come by. I just sold another house over on Zinfandel, and a lady down the street said there's going to be a home right through here for sale. Do you know which one it might be? You see, we got top market value for this particular home, and I'm looking for other homes to sell. Let me give you an example now of some benefits of knocking on the same doors over and over again. This one particular time, and this will probably happen your first time through, and this is why people do not knock on doors. You're going through your neighborhood the first time, and you knock on this particular door, and the guy comes to the door, another real estate salesman, boom, slams the door. Don't want to go back there. He don't like me. The way I look at it, this guy's got a problem. I'm going to help him with it. He needs an attitude adjustment. <laughs> we're going to help him get an attitude adjustment. And the way we're going to do this, in our service planner here, in our little planner book, we have this character's name, we've got his address, and we just going to give him a grade. Let's say this is your little record plate, and at the top, we have the name and the address of the property. We give them three different scores as we go through it. And we knock on the door, the people are nice, but they just don't know of anybody. We give them a little plus. It was a nice experience and we just continue on. If we come through and we knock on the door and there's nobody home, we give them a zero. We just start developing a little line here of what happened the last time we came through there. Well, Mr. Joe Nasty that slammed the door and says, another real estate salesman, get out of here, boom, slams the door. What do we give him? He just flunked. Poor old boy. Well, we'll work on him. The next time coming back through, I look in here and I see, uh-oh, that's him. I see him. So now I take my brochure, maybe my business card, 
And be sure when you're passing out materials, if people are not home, do not stick the materials in the mailbox. There's a federal regulation that you cannot do that. And you'll get homeowners down your back. You'll get the postman picking up your materials and throwing them away or even causing trouble for you. And I don't want that to happen. What we do now, we're approaching Mr. Nasty. He slammed the door on us the last time, right? And that was the last time he's going to slam the door on us. Now what we do is we go up and we take our brochure and our business card that we're passing out and we place it behind the mailbox. I like to. If you leave it on the doorstep, it may blow away or in the screen door or something like that. But I always like to put it right behind the mailbox where it goes flush with the house, the side of the house and the mailbox. We place this material by the mailbox. We knock on the door. We start to walk away. We hear Mr. Nasty open the door. We say, hi, in the neighborhood, just want to say hello and keep on going. <laughs> Whose ego just got boosted? <laughs> one to one. <laughs> How is his ego? I saw that guy in here before. They maybe check his mail. That clown throws it on the floor, <coughs> stomps on your card, whatever it might be. Next time you come through, same thing. Place your card. Hi, in the neighborhood, just want to say hello. It's now two to one, right? <laughs> How much rejection are you taking? You're none. Doesn't it feel good to get even? <laughs> this is a true story. Mr. Nasty, this particular guy, about the third time through, I knocked on the door. I had left my brochure and everything, started to walk away. The door opened, hi, in the neighborhood, just want to say hello, took a couple more steps, and he says, what's property values today? Obviously, sir, you're thinking of selling or you wouldn't have asked. <laughs> How soon had you thought of putting the property on the market? Where do you plan to move when we sell your home? Now we're qualifying, aren't we? Do you like that a little bit better? Isn't that fun? You can have a great time out there if you just do it right. Yes, we did list the house in about two more weeks and expired. Darn it. <laughs> no, it did. <laughs> hey, I've had them die in escrow too. Whew. That is bad. Let me share something else with you that worked out tremendously well. When you're going to be knocking on doors, what I want you to do is to start thinking about multiplying your efforts through other people. Let's say for an example, you have picked out a farm area that you like to knock doors in. And maybe across a main road in another subdivision or another area or cluster of homes or something, or a condominium unit or whatever it might be, you would also like to have some listings. Someplace in this area, there is going to be a couple cross streets main intersections, either coming in or in the middle or something like that. Now, what I want you to do is take a piece of cardboard about 15 inches long, 15 to 18 inches long, and about 10 inches high, and take a nice felt tip pen, a real heavy one, and write this message. Three boys wanted to work this area. Call and your phone number. Now, if you put 15 boys wanted, you won't get any. But three boys wanted, and what you want, what you're looking for, is about three young men. Now, if you put three, you'll get 10 or 15 calls, most probably. But if you put three, I find that it works out better. And you've got this on your white cardstock, and you'll make about four of these. And then on Saturday morning, go out early and just tack them up on the street signs. Normally, these street signs are four by four wood posts. Tack them up where they're very visible. Maybe a couple of them on a main intersection, one coming in, one going out. Then what you want to do is find about three young men that live in that neighborhood that will pass out brochures for you. And what they're going to do, as an example, when you're on floor duty or getting ready to have materials passed out on Tuesday, you can even have them put the, your name stamp on it or you can have your materials made with your name on it already. It depends on how you're set up and what your office might provide. You have these signs that you're going to have put in the area at the major intersections, wherever they might be. And what you're going to do now is you're going to pay these boys probably about two to three cents a piece just to pass these brochures out. They don't discuss market value. They don't discuss real estate. They say hello, goodbye. And all they do is just go door to door and laying the materials on the doorsteps. 
but you've got to have a nice brochure in order to do this, something that's effective. One that I found to work very good was one that's, that was like this. For those of you that can see it, it says wanted at the top, and then it reads, we need homes to meet our purchasers' demands. Thinking of selling? Selling is our business. Or, do you want cash for your home? Question mark. No points, no commission with cash. Call the action company, then your company name on there and a phone number. Let's see what our total investment is. To have 500 brochures printed up, how much is that going to cost us? Maybe three cents a piece, 15 at the most. Let's go maybe on the high side. We've got 15 dollars and at two cents a piece, let's go heavy, let's say three cents a piece. How much is that? Another 15 dollars. We've got a total investment of how much? 30 dollars. For every 500 brochures you pass out, if you've got a good brochure, you should get a minimum of one listing. A minimum of one listing. How much time is involved in this, in your prospecting? Almost nothing, isn't it? Maybe 30 minutes? How much money invested? How many of you would pay $30 for a listing? <laughs> the guy says, where's this guy been all my life? Now, let me show you an interesting thing. Are you just limited to this one area in passing these out? Then you can develop another area, can't you? How many areas would you like? <laughs> the gal says a state. <laughs> yeah, you can just go bananas with that. And an explanation now of this brochure. Let's say, for an example, this lady over here, uh, I don't know who she is, where she's from, or anything at all. She calls and says, uh, I'm calling about this brochure here. No points, no commission with cash. Can you explain that to me, please? And I say, yes, ma'am, I can. It depends what your property is. Is it a residential property or an investment property? She says, residential. Naturally, that's where you pass them out, isn't it? And you say, how many bedrooms is it? She says, three bedrooms. And I says, how many baths is it? She says, two baths. I say, what, what street is it located on? She says, it's on Vianney Way. I say, and who am I speaking with, please? And she says, Mrs. Brown, that's all I need. And you can even get them to give you the phone number and whatever you can if you've got some telephone technique. But all you're wanting to do is just get their address so you can go over and see the property. Now, when you go over, if you do need to explain this, here's the way it would go. As an example, Mrs. Brown, I find that sometimes when people need to sell their home, they need some front money to take care of their traveling expenses. If they have to get back east or out west real quick, they may need some front money, and that money would be used for traveling expenses or whatever. So what we do with no points, no commission, when we take care of marketing the property, I can advance you $500 or whatever you might need within reason. Then out of close of escrow, you reimburse me that cash advance. Naturally, she's going to be paying your normal brokerage fee out of that also. And then what we do is we do not charge you any points. We do not charge you any fee of interest. We do not charge any commission on that temporary loan. Now, never once did I ever have to make a cash advance using this. However, I did list a bunch of houses. You see, all I want to do is to find out that this individual has a need to sell. And normally these are excellent prospects. When you get a lead off one of these, there are tremendous prospects. One thing that you need to do when you're prospecting is have a three by five card file box set up by month, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, all the months. Now when you get a lead and somebody says, well, we'll be selling in, uh, in about six months, don't wait six months to call them back. Contact them in one third the time, I do recommend. Because if they say, well, we'll be selling in about six months, maybe they're thinking that that's going to be the close of escrow. Because when I was new in the business, I found that a lot of times I would call back and they had already listed the property. It had been sold. The property was about to close escrow. These are some of the things you need to head off. And you can do that by contacting them back. When I started in the real estate business, it was in the dead of winter. It was in December. And if you're familiar with Sacramento, in the winter time, our winter there, it gets cold, but it never snows. But it rains in a normal winter, an awful lot. And the rain was coming down. Now, when I started into the business, I figured out that there was telephone canvassing for sale by owners, past clients and friends, referrals, expired listings, and knocking on doors was about five of the major ways 
to get listings. I didn't know how to work expired listings. I didn't know any telephone technique. I didn't know how to work with for sale by owners. And I didn't have a referral system. So I deducted out of that that the only way I was going to survive in the business was to knock on doors. So I started out in the business knocking on doors 8, 10, sometimes 12 hours a day, door to door. I had big, fat, swollen knuckles. <laughs> and that's why I have the raincoat and the rain hat and everything in my trunk here. I have been out canvassing and knocking doors when it's been raining so hard you could not see the other end of the street. This one particular time, I got up and it was getting cold. It was starting to get through the end of January. It was really getting cold out. There would be some days I'd come in, my hands would be so cold and numb and wet that it would probably take at least 30 minutes that I could start getting the feeling back into them. Had my raincoat, my rain hat, my little rubber booties on, going out knocking on doors. I can guarantee you one thing. I never ran into another salesman <laughs> while I was out there. This one morning, after being out for the previous day, and I would come home in the evening sometimes, and you could literally take my t-shirt, my socks, and squeeze the water out of them, even with wearing all this paraphernalia. And one thing, people have sympathy for you when you're knocking on doors like that. They think, this clown is really dedicated, or hungry, <laughs> or both. <laughs> so anyway, I was out knocking doors this one particular day, got up the next morning, and I had gotten laryngitis. So I got up and I thought, my gosh, how am I going out and knock doors like that? So I thought, well, I went in the bathroom and I read my goals and I was supposed to be out there by 10 o'clock. I thought, well, I'll get in the shower, take a really long, hot shower, and maybe my, my voice will come back to me. I jumped out of the shower. My voice was still gone. And I thought, well, I'll just get dressed and drive out in my area in the excitement. My voice will probably come back. So I got dressed, drove out in my area, walked up to the first door, knocked on the first door. This lady comes to the door. looks like she had just gotten out of bed. She had on this thin, <laughs> pink. <laughs> and I said, is your husband home? <laughs> she said, no, come on in. <laughs> oh, boy. A good thing to do also, <laughs> a good thing to do also is to canvas around a sold sign. Now keep in mind now, even if you're new in the business, you can still use this dialogue. If you did not personally sell it, if your company sold it, you can say, we just sold another house. We are company. Even if it's in your farm area and another broker sold his own listing, you can still say, we just sold another property over on. See, we in real estate, right? Sure, we just sold. The real estate industry just sold. If you're going through a neighborhood every 30 to 45 days knocking on doors and you're saying to the clients there, the people living in the homes, we just sold, I just sold, this house here, this house here, what's starting to develop in those people's minds? What happens now when the husband comes home in another week or two and he says, "Hun, you'll never guess what happened. We thought we was going to be here for another two or three years at least. Why well, just got orders to transfer? Who's that crazy guy that sells all the houses and feeds the dogs and leaves the balloons and does this for the kids? He passes this out. He got literature all through his house. LSMFT, LSMFT, the same thing over and over and over again. And what you'll notice just by using this brief dialogue like I've given to you here that the next time you start coming through, because these people know that you're not going to be taking up a lot of their time, you're not going to be holding them at the door for 10 or 15 minutes, you're going to ask one or two questions, ask if they can help, maybe even drop off a little gift, they're going to become much more open to you. And your second or third time back through there, you're going to start getting invited in for coffee, you're going to get invited to work up comparative market analysis, and I'll mention this, be very careful about working up these comparative market analysis. I think too many people jump on the bandwagon too quick just to work up a comparative market analysis. There are some pass out coupons that are excellent. It says, for free market analysis, contact, and it looks like a little certificate. I think those are great. But let's say you've passed out a couple hundred of these and somebody calls in and says, I've got this coupon. It says, good for one free market analysis. Would you please work me one up? I'd be most happy to. 
Where do you folks plan to move when we sell your property? How soon had you thought of putting the property on the market? And they say, oh, now wait a minute. We're not even thinking of selling. We'd like to have this. Fine, I'd be most happy to work one up. However, I'll put you on my list here, and when I get to it, I'll do it. You see, don't be too eager to go spending a lot of time working up all these free market analysis for people that are not even thinking of selling their property. The question was just asked is, and I may rephrase it here, if you're canvassing an area and you see that maybe you've been through it three or four times and you've got four or five zeros out there and the people are not home, do I come back and check with them? Maybe these would be good people, and that's a good question. During my open house, when times are a little slow, I may get my book out, my service plan, and, and look down through here and just say, gee, now here's these people here. I've been by four times and they're never home. Let me use my cross directory. I'll get their telephone number, or I can look in the yellow pages most probably if they got a listed phone number, and I'll call them right now during my open house. Then so you get into time management, making the best use of your time. Call them up and say, hi, Mr. Jones. I'm Roger Butcher. I'm the guy that leaves all the dog cookies on the front step. I don't know if you got a dog or not. <laughs> Maybe you wouldn't say that, but, uh, you know, the cards and stuff. And I'm sorry I've missed you. When I've been there, you were gone. When you're there, I'm gone. And I thought I'd call and say hi. By the way, we just sold another house over on Campana, and a lady down your street said there's going to be a home right through your area there for sale. Do you know which one it might be? Don't have any idea. Fine. I thank you for your help. By the way, when will you folks be selling? I went on a listing presentation here about a year ago before I started doing the seminars and this guy called me. He says, Mr. Butcher, I would like for you to come over and list my house. So I went over. I was all prepared, went in. He brought out a stack of business cards about this high. And I said, my gosh, all the salespeople in town must have been by here. Then he took the rubber band off of them and he spread them out like a big deck of cards right on the table. All but about three cards of them were mine. We counted them out. We counted them out. There was 57 cards. He says, I'd be a fool to list my house with anybody else but you. And I says, I agree. 